Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys doing this afternoon? It is currently 4.45 p.m. on this nice March day. It is actually not too cold outside today. It is, I'm gonna check and see what the weather is right now, but um, I was sitting out here talking on the phone. I was just talking to Mel, my book club partner. Hey Mel, how are you doing? And I was uh, texting Nikki, the book club member, <laughs> my, my good Judy uh, Nikki. It is currently, oh, it's 58 degrees, partly cloudy outside. And um, let's see, river flood warning. What's the weather supposed to be like tomorrow? Oh gosh, tomorrow it's supposed to be 68 degrees. It's gonna be so nice tomorrow. Um, so anyway, got up today and we went to brunch, had a nice brunch. Um, and then brought my coffee home. This is caramel coffee, which in Indiana we say caramel. <laughs> but if I say caramel, everybody goes, caramel. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, there's all kinds of people walking today and um, walking their dogs and power walking and all kinds of stuff. I I'm tired. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, I'm gonna start my vlog early today. Alex is upstairs and he is like watching TikToks and hanging out with Boo Radley. We just fed Boo Radley. Um, we ran around and did a few errands after um, we got done with brunch, but then came right home and, um, well, didn't come right home, ran some errands and then came home. And then Alex took him out and then I fed him. And then after he got done eating, he ran upstairs with his dad. And that's when I was talking to Mel and, um, we were just talking about, well, so I'm trying to watch <laughs> all of the movies for the Oscars. We're going to get into this in just a second. This is going to be a, a, a vlog about talking about movies, okay? A little bit, a little bit. Um, because last night I was like trying to power through these movies, but I always do this to myself. I always try to watch like the movies for the Oscars like the week before um, before the Oscars and then it's like I'm down to the wire and it's like I have to watch like two to three movies a day which in all reality I have to tell you because I love movies and TV shows so much you guys know I do I absolutely love like there's nothing more than I love than just being able to sit and watch like two to three movies in a row like I just I I I'm so passionate about it and you know I grew up it was funny because this couple that we see a brunch. I was talking to the woman and I was like, sh she was like, how are you? And I was like, well, I'm kind of tired. I stayed up late last night watching movies. And um, I said, are you like a movie person? And she was like, no, not really. She was like, old movies. I like old movies. And I said, oh yeah, I grew up on old movies. I said, but I grew up on the Oscars. And so, um, you know, my mom and I, when I was a little kid, we would watch the Oscars and all the way through my adult life, all the way through, you know, when my mom passed away, not that last year because she was in the hospital, but we would watch the Academy Awards. And I actually wanted to look this up. I think I've looked this up on here before. So, okay, so when I was growing up, several times my mom would have Oscar parties where she would have like my aunt and uncle over and stuff like that. But the older that I got, it would just be like me and like my boyfriend, whoever I was dating at the time. And most of the time it was just myself would go over and um, like after we got sober, I would come over here and my mom would, you know, make a pot of coffee and she would get some, you know, special sodas and she would like cut a plate of cheese up. Like a, she has this like wood cutting board that I still, she had, but I still have it in there. And then she would get like all different kinds of cheeses, you know, like Havarti cheese was like my mom's favorite. I love Havarti cheese and with special crackers and you know, she'd have some kind of special dessert or something like that. Maybe a quiche Lorraine. <laughs> Who knew? But anyway, um, and then we would watch the Academy Awards. And it was always, like, a big deal. And my mom would say, you have to come dress as your favorite celebrity, which I never did. Um, hi. Hi. And um, so she would always wear, my mom had, like, the, I think it was, like, like, the last, I don't know, three or four years. She had this kind of, like, goldish, silver woven um sweater set it was like a like a short sleeve kind of like sh shirt um but it was like a sweater and then it had like a little sweater that went over it and she always had like a name tag that said sharon stone on it because she loves sharon stone and so she said do you think i looked like sharon stone with her my mom had platinum blonde hair and she would tuck it behind one ear you know and so we would watch the academy awards and it was always something that 
my mom loved. And I think it was, you know, my mom and my aunt grew up just so incredibly poor. And my mom would tell me these stories about when she was a little kid that she and my aunt, for fun, like for make-believe when they were a little kid, they would go and see these movies, you know, which at the time were like a nickel or a quarter to go see these movies, these big, huge musical productions. My mom loved musicals. I don't know how I didn't get that gene, but I just did not get the musical gene. I, there was a few musicals that I like, but other, I'm not, like, I don't, I know that they're, you know, People always are like, okay, guys love musical theater. I don't love musical theater. Um, I don't know what it is. It's just, sometimes it's distracting to me. Um, but, um, so anyway, my mom, she loved them, though. She loved, like, these musicals and these big productions and things like that. And so she and my aunt would, like, go see, like, my mom loves Singing in the Rain. And then they would, like, have their umbrellas out, like, on the street, you know, and they would, like, be playing in the rain, and they'd be like, dun 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 So, um, so my mom, she loved everything to do with movies, and she always wanted to be, like, an actress. And in fact, actually, my mom, more than being an actress, what she wanted to do was be the assistant to Edith Head. So if you don't know who Edith Head is... Edith Head was, the, and I think this actually has a lot to do with why I wanted to get into fashion design. Edith Head was the costume designer, I think for like Universal for years. And um, she like wore these little glasses and she like won a lot of Oscars and stuff like that, I think. And she did like the, I believe she did like a lot of Hitchcock movies, like the gowns for like Rear Window and stuff like that. But she did like these, Edith Head was like, <clears throat> here I'll look her up. So Edith Head did, Oh, Mel just texted me. What did she say? Oh, she said, uh, we were talking about Daisy Jones and the Six, and she was like, you talked about Almost Famous, and which I had forgotten the name of it the other day, and she said she hadn't seen it. And I said, oh, you have to see it. And it was one of my mom's favorite movies, too. And she said it's on Paramount Plus, watching it now. She'll love it. I want to say it. You'll love it. So my mom, in her life, had several dreams of things she wanted to do. She wanted to be a trial attorney, living, like a criminal trial attorney, living in um, San Francisco Harbor on like a, a, a boat. Like that was one, of, I don't know where she ever came up with that. But the other thing she wanted to do was be a costume designer, which my mom didn't sew from, you know, like, she, I mean, she could. My mom likes, you know, knew how to sew in a sewing machine and things like that, but it wasn't like she was like this fantastic sewer or anything like that. But she loved Edith Head, and I don't even know how she found out about Edith Head. So here's Edith Head. And Edith Head was an American costume designer who won a record eight Academy Awards for Best Costume Designer between 1949 and 1973, making her the most awarded woman in the Academy's history. Head is considered to be one of the greatest and most influential costume designers in history. And um, let me see in here if it lists what, what movies... Um, she, oh, she did do, uh, Grace Kelly's outfits in Rear Window, and Hedy Lamarr, and Samson and Delilah, and let's see if it says what her Oscars are for. How did she die? I'm not, I have no idea. Head died on October 4th, 1981, four days before 84th birth birthday, from myofibrosis, uh, incurable bone marrow disease. She is uh, interred at Forest Lawn Memorial Park in Glendale, California. Does it say what her Academy... Okay, her Academy Awards. Um, the Emperor Waltz? They're pushing somebody down the street in a wheelchair. It's such a beautiful day for that. Um, the Heiress, Samson and Delilah, All About Eve, A Place in the Sun, The Greatest Show on Earth, Carrie, the 1952, ver uh, 1952 movie Carrie, Roman Holiday, Sabrina, To Catch a Thief, The Rose Tattoo, The Ten Commandments, The Proud and the Profane, Funny Face, The Buccaneer, The Five Pennies. Oh, no, these are all the ones that she was nominated for, too. Um, Career, Pepe, The Facts of Life, Pocket Full of Miracles. Oh, this goes on and on and on. Okay, let's talk about just the ones that she won. The Heiress, Samson and Delilah, All About Eve, A Place in the Sun, Roman Holiday, Sabrina. You guys, some of these years she was nominated, like in the same year she was nominated for two different movies. Isn't that crazy? 
Okay, The Facts of Life, that was 1960. 1973, The Sting, she won four. So, yeah, so my mom loved her, and she wanted to be the assistant to Edith Head. <laughs> I don't even know where she thought this up. This was, like, something that she always thought up. So we would watch the Academy Awards, and my mom just was, like, so obsessed with it. And, um... She just texted, Mel just texted me and says, Zoe Deschanel is a baby. Um, and, you know, we loved it. And the funny thing about it was, like, you know, nobody was allowed to talk during the Academy Awards except for my mom. And, like, she would talk through the whole thing, you know. And, um, and then, you know, we would always watch the In Memorial part or In Memoriam part, which is, like, everything that everybody has passed away in the last year. And I can remember we would always, like, cry. And, you know, of course, the Academy Awards go, like, three and a half hours long. And, um... I don't know, it's just like one of my greatest memories of my mom. It's one of my happiest memories of my mom, I think, you know, because we would just like sit there and talk and drink coffee and... We got so excited. I can remember there were like certain, you know, years that like people won and like I can remember when Geraldine Page for a trip to Bountiful and we just like went crazy and I can remember when Hillary Swank won for Boys Don't Cry and my mom just like lost it. She was like, this is such an important movie and um Oh, you know, when Aaron Brock when uh Julia Roberts won for Aaron Brockovich and talked about her dress being pretty. And to this day, like one of my favorite things to do it's good on YouTube. Like, people always ask me, like, what YouTube videos do you watch? Like, I don't... I, very rare. Like, there's some people that I watch, like, videos, like, every video that they put out, but very rarely. But, like, one of the things that I do do is I watch, like, Oscar, you know, acceptance speeches. Because I love to... Mostly the women. I like to watch their Oscar acceptance speeches. And so, um... Sandra Bullock won for, won for The Blind Side. Um... And so, you know, we would watch the Academy Awards, and it was just like this magnificent night, you know? And then, when my mom passed away, I can remember like that first year, like Alex knew how important it was to me, and um, I just was like, I kind of like shut down, you know? Like, I think that's part of what you do when you grieve a little bit. But I kind of shut down, and I just was like, I don't think that I can, like, watch the Academy Awards this year. I was going to look, because... So there was a year, and I think it was, like, the third year after. Hold on. I, I know, because the movie The Impossible was out that year. Let me see the release date on that. Hold on. 2012. Okay, so it came out in December. It came out in December of 2012, which means that it was the 2013 Academy Awards. My mom died in 2008, which means 2009, 2012, no, 2009, 2010, 2011, 2012, and so it would have been five years later, four or five years later, a couple of years in there, like the first two years, I just like, I couldn't watch the Academy Awards. And then, like I didn't really like watch all the movies or anything like that. My mom used to go see like all the movies with my uncle Dave and she knew all the movies and everything like that. And then, um, I, like Tanya, I would go over to Tanya's house and, um, cause like Alex is not really big on like award shows. He just doesn't really enjoy them that much. I love watching the red carpet and everything. So I would go over to Tanya's house and she, like, she knew how important it was for me. And so she, and she watches them too. So she would like, you know, make like popcorn and like cut up apples and cheese and stuff. Just kind of like my mom did. And we were watching, I remember this one year. I think it happened actually like two years in a row. We like went to go get fountain pops and like, cause you know the Academy Awards go real long and we went to go get fountain pops at like 9.30 or 10. And when we came back, like Eric had like stopped the recording. And so we didn't get to see 
<laughs> who like won like best actor. He goes, well, you can just look it up and you'll know. And Tanya's like, that is not the point. We were recording this because we wanted to know like who, we wanted to watch it. Like when we got back, like we were still watching it live. But anyway, I don't even know how I came up with the idea, but I was like, I think I just had like a really slow week or something like that. And um, it was like the Oscars were gonna be on that Sunday. And I had, like Alex and I, like the week before, I was like, I'm thinking about maybe like trying to go see all of these movies. This was before like you could stream movies. Like, I mean, you could stream movies online, but this was before like, the movies for the Oscars were online. Like now, like every movie, like every, mo almost every movie that's up for like a major, uh, like, uh, what do you call it? Like best, you know, a major section, like best picture, best actor, actress, best supporting actor, actress, all those. All of those are streaming online that you can find them or rent them, except for The Whale. The Whale's the only one. So you had to go see him in the movie theater. So I think it was like the weekend before and I said to Alex, I said, you know, like, how would you feel about, like, going to see, like, two movies in a row with me? Like, you know, whatever. And he was like, yeah, that would be fun. And so I remember the first night we went to go see, what's the movie with Ben Affleck? Argo, maybe? And then we went and saw Lincoln, I think is what it was called. Um, and we watched those two movies. And then, I think that was on a Sunday, actually, like a Sunday night that we went and saw those movies back to back. And then, I think it was that year that I did this, because I think I might have done it two years in a row. Oh, Tawny Jean's calling me. And um, I'll call her in just a second. And then I, um, and then that Thursday and Friday, so Thursday and Friday, I think it was Thursday and Friday, I like took those days off and was just like, I'm just gonna go see movies. And I started like real early. Maybe it was just Friday, I don't remember. I think it might've just been Friday. And then Saturday, I like powerhouse through movies. And I remember the last movie, cause Django Unchained came out that year. And that was like Tanya and I, that was like the last movie that I went to go see. And Tanya and I went to go see it on like a Saturday night at like, like the 10.30. We went and saw that. And I had been seeing movies like Friday and Saturday. I got up at like early and I went and saw like a 10, a 12, a 1. I mean, I went all day long. <laughs> I can remember I was like trying to pace myself on treats because I love to eat treats in the movie theater. And so I was like, you know, like, okay, I'm going to get, and I used to always get uh, caramel popcorn, caramel popcorn. And so I was like, by the time I was at the second movie, I was like so full. I was like, okay, I can't do this anymore. But I had such a fun time doing it and seeing like all of those movies that this week, it was like a couple days ago, I was just kind of like, eh, screw it. Like there's not really that many movies out that I really want to see this year anyway that I really care about. And so I was like, who cares? And I'm not going to try to keep up with the Academy Awards this year. I'm just like, it is what it is. And, you know, um, uh, but then it was like last night, like I, I kept on, it was kind of like really just like bothering me. I was like, okay, I'm going to want to watch the Academy Awards. I'm going to want to know what these movies are, you know, whatever. And Alex and I had seen Maverick, which is up for Best P Picture, uh, Top Gun, and Avatar, which is up for Best Picture. And then last night, Alex and I watched, we were trying to like, you know, we wanted to watch the Whitney Houston movie, which is not up for anything, because I think it came out this year, maybe. It's not going to be up for anything anyway. I'm just going to tell you that right now. Now, I do have to tell you what is funny about this movie, okay? is that Tanya texted me. We didn't even tell each other we were gonna watch the movie. I just mentioned to her that Alex and I were thinking about watching it. She texted me. We were like in the last five minutes of the movie and Tanya texted me and she said, um, I just finished the Whitney Houston movie. And I said, I texted her back and I said, oh my God, we're in the last five minutes. And she said, I can't stop crying. And I said, oh my God, me neither. I don't know what it is about this movie. Let me just tell you about this Whitney Houston movie, okay? First of all, if you are a fan of Whitney Houston, you have to see this movie. Period. End of story, okay? Um, it is so fantastic. It is so good. The girl doesn't look a lick like Whitney Houston. She don't act like Whitney Houston. And it does not matter, okay? It does not matter. I don't know. I, I don't care. I, I just, it's so about, like, just the story of her life. And, um, and, and it just is, Stanley Tucci as Clive Davis is just fantastic. And they really honor 
Whitney Houston's relationship with Robin Car uh, Crawford, who was, I don't know if you guys know this about Whitney Houston, but this came out in her documentary too, which was her girlfriend early on. And, you know, I was really, and, 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 so Pat Houston, who ends up taking over Whitney Houston's business and becomes her manager at the end of her life, apparently was the one that like wrote most of this or like helped write it. And Tanya was telling me that she said that Robin was such a huge part of Whitney Houston's life that if she was gonna do this movie and she was gonna write it honestly, that she was gonna write Robin as a huge part of it. And Robin Crawford as Whitney Houston's girlfriend and best friend is like a huge part. I mean like next to Bobby Brown is the biggest part of the movie. I was just so blown away. I mean, Alex didn't even know about it. I was like, oh, because like when you meet her, you meet her like in the first five minutes of the movie, right? And I'm like, oh, that's Robin. And he's like, who's Robin? And I was like, Whitney Houston's girlfriend. <laughs> Did you not know about Robin? Because she's in the documentary, I think, as well. And she's still alive. And um, Cece Houston, her mom, is still alive. And the, the whole movie was just like... Um, the other thing I liked about it was it didn't focus so much on the drugs. It, it did. It just was a very honest, I don't want to say too much because I think people should watch it. It just was a very, I thought, a very honest telling of who Whitney Houston was and how she just really struggled with um, keeping up and going and things like that. Alex was crying. I was crying. I cried through the whole thing. I don't even know what it was. It was like every time they played one of her songs, I started crying. I don't know why they picked this girl to play her. She looked more like Angela Bassett than she did like Whitney Houston, though. I mean, she looked like a dead ringer for Angela Bassett. And I was like, I said to Alex, at first I was like, there is something that kind of looks like, that look, she kind of looks like Whitney Houston. Alex is like, no, there's nothing about her that looks like Whitney Houston. And then by the end I go, does she look like Angela Bassett? He goes, yes, exactly like Angela Bassett. She did, though. She did, should do a, She should do the autobiography of Angela Bassett, which I would totally watch in a second because I'm a huge Angela Bassett fan. But, um, so yeah, but it was interesting. It was also interesting because they go in and they show, like, how Whitney picked the songs that she was going to sing, which... I didn't know anything about that, and so, like, that's a huge part of it as well. And, like, not just how she picked them, but when she picked them. Because um, there were certain songs that, like, she said no to, and then years later said, okay, I'll, I'll do this song. Um, that was interesting as well. Very tragic ending to the, to the movie, but, I, you know, I have to tell you, I've given it a... I mean... It's cheesy. It's kind of cheesy on some levels, but I would give it a 4.5. I loved it. I enjoyed it. Um, I mean, it was... It was, a, I thought it was a really good docudrama. I mean, was it like a made-for-TV movie? Yes, 100%. <laughs> but anyway, so then we got done, and I was talking to Tanya about the movie, and then I called my sponsor because it was her birthday. Um, and, well, it was actually, she had COVID, and it was her birthday the day before, and so I was calling, and she was feeling much better. And so I was just like, how are you doing? She's like, I'm good. She's like, but I'm still testing positive, so I'm on quarantine, and... So I was like, oh, I'm sorry you couldn't go get your, you know, coin and stuff like that. She's like, that's okay. I've got plans. I'm just like, for next week, I'm just hoping that I'm not, you know, testing positive by then. And she's like, I feel fine. And um, she's been in quarantine now for like almost a week. So, but anyway, so I talked to my sponsor and I talked to Tanya. And Tanya and I were talking about the movie and everything like that. And then I was like, well, I think Alex and I are going to go pick another movie. And Tanya was, I can't remember what she was going to watch. So I went inside and I was like, okay, Alex, what do you want to watch? And he was like, I don't care, you pick it. And I was like, well, if we're gonna watch something. So I had decided, all right, <laughs> I'm gonna watch all these movies. For, I, I, I don't know when it came over me during Whitney Houston, okay? <laughs> But sometime during that movie, I decided that I was going to watch every movie that's going to be on the Oscar. Well, not like short film animated documentaries, not all that kind of stuff. I can't listen, <laughs> Linda, okay? I can't do all of it, okay, in one week. I just can't. I wish I could, but I could, can't. So anyway, but I was like, I'm going to watch all the movies that are like best picture, you know, best director. Do we even do that anymore? Best picture. Best actor. Best actress. Best supporting actor. Best supporting actress. Because those are the only ones I care about, right? So I was like, okay, so I'm going to do that, and I'm going to make sure I get through those this week. Little did I know how many I have to watch. I had 14 to watch. <laughs> I actually had three movies a day. And let me just tell you, I went and looked, and almost all of these movies are at least two and a half hours long, okay? So I said, well, what do you want to watch? So I was, like, looking through these movies because I was like, I just don't think there's a lot that he's going to be that interested in. 
So, you know, Alex loves, like, Marvel movies, and he looks, like, super, you know, like, science fiction and all that kind of stuff. Not science fiction, but he likes, like, sci what's so, like, super action figure, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, I had heard really, really good things about Everything Everywhere All at Once with Michelle, Michelle Yao and Jamie Lee Curtis, and, but I had also seen the previews for it, and I knew that it was, like, parallel universes and... Um, like a lot of just the superpower kind of stuff. And so I was like, well, I think maybe Alex would like this. He would enjoy it, right? And it was interesting because like every time I would see somebody talk about this on like Twitter or whatever, they'd be like, oh my God, this movie is incredible. Like this is the most amazing movie in the entire world, right? So we start this movie and Alex is like laying down on the couch and like literally every five minutes, he like is waking himself up snoring. And I go, are you like watching, are you bored? Babe, we can turn this off and watch something else. He's like, no, he goes, you just finish it. And I was like, okay. So finally he's like asleep on the couch. I'm like, I'm 20 minutes into this movie. And he sits up and he's like, um, I said something and he, he sat up and he goes, I'm gonna go to bed. And so he like, I said, are you gonna take Boo Radley with you? And he grabbed Boo Radley and he like took his little paw and he went like this. So then they went upstairs and they went to bed. And I was like, well, do you care if I finish watching this? He was like, no, not at all, I'll finish watching it. So I sat there and I kept on watching it and I was so confused. <laughs> I was so confused by this movie, okay? And I was like, okay, I'm gonna watch it. It was like an hour and a half long, or two hour, two and a half hours long, I think. Two, two hours or two and a half hours long. So I was like, I am going to watch this movie. And, um, and I'm not gonna spoil the rest of these movies that I'm gonna talk about, okay? I, I'm gonna tell you just briefly what they're about, but I'm not gonna ruin them for you. So, I was like, I'm gonna watch up to an hour. And if at an hour, I can't like get into this anymore, like I'm done, right? So, I watched it and I went and like made a cup of tea and I'm like I got a blueberry muffin with some cream cheese on it and I had like a little pecan pie like one of those little ones you get at the gas station you know oh by the way when I was with my good Judy Valerie like a week ago I bought these bunt cakes at the gas station I mean literally like a week ago and I pulled them out last night and I thought oh you should just look at these they're like little strawberry cheesecake bunt cakes they were like uh, hostess bunt cakes they were so cute I was so excited to have them and I was like oh you should look at the expiration date I bought them a week ago okay expiration day November 2022 not happy about it. <laughs> so anyway, but I ate my pecan pie, which was not good. It was stale. And, um, and the, but my muffin with my cream cheese was good. So I sat there and I was like, by the end of eating that, I was like, oh my God, this movie is so good. Like I could not stop watching it. The last hour was so fantastic. The film is just, first of all, it's just unbelievably shot. It's very much, okay. So like I was trying to explain this to Mel. It's kind of like that Eternal Sunshine movie or like being John, John Malkovich. It's real weird, okay? Like it's real weird. Like if you like those kind of weirdo movies, like it's like that, right? Which I don't typically like. But the, the, uh, the what do you call it? The, um, the commentary at the, that the movie makes, it's really a lot of commentary about social media and it's commentary about we in this world that it says about who we've become as people is like beautiful. Like it is such a beautiful movie and it ends in such a beautiful way. And I just was like, I loved it. I loved this movie. I just was, and it's nominated for like best actress. Michelle Yao got it for best actress. And be there's two supporting actresses, Jamie Lee Curtis and then this girl that plays her daughter, plays Michelle Yao's daughter. And it's up for best picture. And I think it's a real contender. I really do. Like I just was blown away by this movie. So then it was like 2.30 and I was like, well, hey, it's 2.30, that's early for me, <laughs> okay? We got all kinds of movies to watch over here. So I was like, what am I gonna watch next? So I went to my list of movies, right? And I was like, what am I gonna watch that's like nominated the most? And so I was like looking through, because you can look up on the list, like if you, if you Google, Oscar nominations 2023 it like literally comes up and then it like you just like scroll to the right and it like pulls up every category category what did I say topics earlier <laughs> section sections I said a category earlier so it comes up with like all the categories and I was looking for like 
which movie had like the most hits of the most categories, if that makes sense. Best picture, best actor, best supporting actor, best actress, you know, all this kind of stuff, best supporting actress, things like that. And this movie, Okay, it stopped. This movie that I had heard about, but I really didn't know anything about, which was called Banshees of, and I'm going to mispronounce this, but it's Encheron, I think is how you pronounce it. Banshees of Encheron. Um, was like up for like everything. And it's with Colin Farrell. And Colin Farrell, and this is not going to ruin it for you because this is literally in the first like minute and a half of the movie. Colin Farrell plays this guy that lives in this small island, on the small island on the north of Ireland. And it takes place, I think, like, during World War II, maybe World War I. And, um, okay, beautifully, beautifully shot. Like, I was telling Alex today, I never really had any desire to go to Ireland until I saw this movie. Like, this movie is just, like, the countryside of Ireland is, like, so beautiful. So it's about like, I would say like, you know, 50 to 100 people that live in this small town or this small island in Sharon. And it's like on this lake and it has this lake and then it has like, it's like on the ocean, obviously. And so anyway, Colin Farrell is just like this really sweet, nice guy. He lives with his sister. His parents are passed, have passed away. And his best friend is this guy that's like 20 years older than him that plays violin and like is music writer. And so every day it's just like, he milks the cows and goes down and gets this guy and they go to the pub for a pint. And that's literally the entire movie. Except that on day one, in the first two minutes of this movie, he goes to this guy's house and the guy won't talk to him anymore because the guy doesn't want to be his friend anymore. And the whole movie is about him trying to like rekindle this friendship and not really understanding why this guy doesn't want to be his friend. And it's really, I mean, it's so much more than that. But, like, I was telling Mel, and Mel's like, God, you watch such depressing movies. It was super depressing. Fantastic. Oh, my God. It was so fantastic. I could not believe it. And, um, you know, it kind of reminded me a little bit of um, that movie that I watched last year. So I watched it, the, okay, so last year for the Academy Awards, I didn't get to watch, like, all of the movies. But I did watch the one about, um, oh, shoot, um, King, King Richard, um, about Venus and Serena's dad. That movie was really, really good. And I, I'm not real down with what Will Smith did and all that kind of stuff, and that was a huge controversy last year, but that movie was fantastic. Um, it really was. And, um, but this other movie that I watched, I, like, watched, like, three movies in a row. Did Coda win last year? Was Coda the one that won last year? Oh, I love that movie to this day. Alex and I just watched it. He had never seen it, so we watched it again. I think Coda won last year. Maybe it was two years ago. I don't know. But anyway, I watched this movie... I can't remember what it was called, but it was where this woman and her son that ended up, like, he was gay, they moved out, and it took place, like, in the early 1900s, they moved, like, she got married, and they moved to, like, this farm, and anyway, and, like, he had a relationship with, like, the guy, do you guys know what I'm talking about, like, and, um, there they are, what are we drinking today? Bell's, uh, too hearted. Okay, what? Clop. Okay, hey, like your cup, your Starbucks cup. <laughs> Loves it. Have a good one. Hey, you too. They're like this young couple and they walk their baby and their dogs every day. And they're so cute. And every day they always have like a different drink that they're drinking. And so I always ask them like what they're drinking. She said, claw. And she had like this gold Starbucks cup. That was like a, like a venti Starbucks cup. Like my, my Starbucks cups. But they're so friendly. I love them. Um, I can't wait to get my walkway all beautiful with flowers and everything like that. I'm so ready for it. I want to get some really, like, pretty, uh, like, I like these pillows, these blue and white pillows. But I was, like, thinking the other day, like, not even just to get gingham, but just get, like, bright, like, orange and yellow that will go with, like, the plants and the flowers and just make them, like, real pretty, you know? So, anyway, um, power of the dog. Power of the dog. Oh, my God. So, that movie last year, oh, when I watched that movie... I started watching it and I thought, this movie is going to be so boring. And I'm, I can't get through this movie. I think Alex went to bed early and I like watched this movie one night. And I was like, and it was literally like, oh, I watched it the night before the Academy Awards. And um, I was, because who's the director of Power of the Dog? She has done, she did, um, 
She did the movie Angel at My Table, I think. Jane Campion. Oh, yes. So Jane Campion did the movie Angel at My Table years ago. Did you guys ever see that movie? Oh, my God. Me and my friend, we love this movie so much. We talk about it all the time. If you've never seen the movie Angel at My Table, it has some of the most beautiful music in the entire world. I have the CD down in my basement, but it really does. I should download that um, soundtrack, see if they have it um, on iTunes. Anyway, I'll look up that up after I get off here. But anyway, I'll for totally forget. If I don't look it up now, I will totally look it, I will forget it. So let's look it up really quick on iTunes. Angel at My Table. Soundtrack. <laughs> they don't have it on iTunes. Nope. But I have it in my basement, so <laughs> I'll have to pull it out. Alex and I was thinking about this the other day when Alex and I first got together and we were like trying to save money and all this kind of stuff. Like I don't really ever spend money on, I mean, socks and stuff like that. But like I don't really spend money on like big items anymore. Not like I would just go in somewhere and drop like a couple hundred dollars on something, you know. And I was thinking about this the other day. We would go to brunch on Sundays and I don't remember where we used to go, but we wouldn't like, it wasn't like expensive brunches like we do now. But we would go to Restoration Hardware afterwards and we would just like walk around the mall and stuff. And I remember there was this thing that we always wanted to get. We never did. I think I'm gonna buy it and just like surprise Alex. And it was like, you know, um, what is it called? The old um, record players that has like the thing on it. Do you know what I'm talking about? Um, I gotta find this thing to show you guys. It's like two or three hundred dollars. It's like it's expensive, but it's not super expensive. But I should do that as like to surprise Alex. Store ration hardware. We looked at this thing so many times, and I can remember thinking, I'm gonna buy this for Alex for Christmas. I'm gonna buy this for Alex for his birthday. And we never did. And you can like hook your phone up to it, you can play like CDs through it. But it plays it like with like through like it sounds like through a record player. Um, I don't even know what to call it. Record player device, I said, but that's not coming up. Gramophone. Here it is. Bluetooth. This doesn't look like it though. Well, this is Etsy. Well, this is kind of what it looks. Oh, I guess this is a $220 on Macari. Gramophone phonograph. And so you can hook your phone in there and everything and you can play all your songs. Isn't that cool? And then you can play CDs and everything. Anyway, we looked, I can't tell you how many times we looked at that and we were like, God, oh, that's so expensive. That's so expensive. We'll wait till Christmas or whatever. And we never got it. All the hours of joy that we would have had from that. <laughs> Not. <laughs> anyway, um, so I wa okay, So I was really excited to see that Power of the Dog last year because of Jane Campion directing it, and um, I can. It got like bad reviews. People did not love it, and it was on Netflix. I think it still is on Netflix. I loved it. I thought it was so good. I can't remember what else I watched last year, but anyway, so. Last night, I finished watching Banshees of Incheron. I would highly recommend it. Five out of five stars. Loved it. But I will tell you, it is slow. And um, it's just... The message behind it... It's really interesting to me, I will just say this. That both that and Everything Everywhere All at Once, both kind of the messages behind it are really about this idea of kindness in our world. And the importance of kindness. Um, 
and what happens when you test people's kindness. And so, um, or compassion or love. And um, it's interesting that there's kind of this common theme, you know? So I watched that. Then it was late, okay? Then it was like 5.30, but I still wasn't tired. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna start a movie, but I'm only gonna watch half of it, which I did. And I went to bed at 6.30, okay? And it was real late, but I didn't care because I was like, I'm doing, it's Oscar week. So I was like, I was looking through all these movies and there's this woman that's nominated for Best Actress that I actually haven't heard of. Her name is like um, Andrea like Rimbauer or something. Like, do you guys know who this person is? And she is the star of this movie called To Leslie. And the movie is about, um, it's based on a true story of a woman that won the Texas lottery for $135,000 and then six years later she had lost it all, which is, before you even start the movie, that's all happened, okay? I mean, like, the movie starts and she's, like, lost it all. And, um, so I'm not ruining anything for anybody. When I tell you, I got an hour into this movie, when I tell you that this movie is so tragically sad, and she is such a fantastic actress. Like, I am like, oh my God. But there's like all this controversy around this movie, apparently. Like, I was reading these articles about it because it was like the week before the nominations. And, um, oh, this red bird just landed over there. It's Cardinal. It's so pretty. And, um, the director, like, started really campaigning hard on social media for attention for her, right? And so, um... All of these people came out of the woodwork. I mean, like Kate Winslet, even not Kate Winslet, Kate Blanchett even said something like when she won an award about how great her performance was in this movie, and she's up against her at the Academy Awards. It was like all of these people um, came out and were like singing her praises. And so they're saying that because they used social media and then all of these people voted for her to get nominated, that it was an unfair nomination. But then the Academy came out and they did this like investigation into it because they were thinking about rescinding the nomination, which they've only done like once or twice ever in the history of the Academy. I read this whole article about it. It was very interesting. And, um, they said that they were not going to rescind the nomination, but that next year, like, it's going to change. It's, somehow they're going to change something, and, like, the appropriate parties have been talked to about this or something. So I don't know what that means. Like, if they're not going to be able to be nominated again in the future or whatever, um, and it's speculative whether or not she's going to be attending the, the Academy Awards. Um, but I'm going to tell you right now, you watch this movie, she deserves to be up for an Academy Award, period, end of story. And the reason why the director was campaigning for her was, and because he wanted to bring attention to the movie, because the movie, like, out of the gate, like, only got, like, 30,000, um, only got, like, $30,000, like, like, only made $30,000, and so they're talking about, like, supporting, um, what do you call it, um, supporting, like, indie filmmakers and smaller filmmakers. But the problem with it is, okay, is that she got a nomination spot when there were um, other people that didn't get nomination spots. And they were saying that, you know, if... Um, oh, shoot. Um, I can't remember who the other two people that they were talking about. Um, it was the actress who was in Till... Hold on a second. Um, I think it's this Danielle Deadweiler. They were talking about her and um, somebody else that they like their their nominations got overlooked, and that it with Michelle Yao it was going to be the first time that in the history of the Academy that the majority of the Academy uh, Best Actress nominations. Um, were uh, women of color. And so they were saying that, like, that was a really important thing. And that because social media pushed her so hard to get this nomination, that it basically pushed them out. So it's like all this controversy is around this nomination of hers. But so I don't know. It'll be interesting. Um, Till is another movie that I really, really want to see. That's been on my list for a long time now. So. I think it's free. You can watch it now. Um, I think it's actually free on HBO Max. I was looking at like all the movies on HBO Max that just came out that you can see. Um, so, yeah. So, 
These, so I, okay, so I started watching Two Leslie and I finished it at like an hour. Alice and Janney is in it too, who I absolutely love. Alice and Janney is like incredible. Um, you know, one of my favorite actresses ever. Did you guys ever see her in that movie? I actually just watched this not too long ago. I think I talked about it on here, but I watched that movie, um, I, Tanya, and she plays her mother in it. Oh my God. She was, she won an Academy Award for it, I think. She, she was so good in that movie. I didn't know that whole story about Tanya Harding and all of that. I mean, I really had no clue about that whole story about her. Like, that movie was unreal. Like, I understand why, like, they all won Oscars for that movie now and were nominated and stuff. Like, that was really good. Um, hold on a second. The, uh, Academy Award movies that I have to watch are Women Talking which has Frances McDormand in it. And I don't know a whole lot more about it. I like looked it up last night, I didn't really understand it. Triangle of Sadness, which is a comedy. It's for free, you can watch it on Amazon Prime. The Fablemans, a lot of these you have to rent. Um, the Fablemans, which I have to be honest with you, I'll probably say I end up loving it, but I have absolutely no desire to watch it. Elvis, I have like no desire to watch. Um, I don't know how to pronounce this. I think it's Tar. It's a, about a jazz conductor or a, a music conductor. And it's played by Kate Blanchett, and it's also up for Best Picture. I'm kind of excited to see that. All Quiet on the Western Front, that's on Netflix. I think it's a German movie. It's like a remake of the movie that they, like, back in the day. I'm not real excited to see that. I don't love war movies. Um, Living, I know nothing about. After Sun, To Leslie, which I'm watching right now. Blonde. Blonde is, like, two hours and 58 minutes on Netflix. And I have to just say, like, when I was a kid, like, growing up, I was kind of infatuated with Marilyn Monroe, but I feel like I like read so many books and watched so many movies about Marilyn Monroe that like every time like something comes out about her, I'm just like, like I'm interested, but I'm not interested to spend three hours watching something about her. Black Panther Wakanda Forever, which I'm excited to see. Alex and I'll probably watch that together, maybe tonight. Causeway and The Whale. And The Whale is the only one that I have to go see in the movie theater, and it's actually the one I want to see the most. Um, I've heard such great things about it. Alex said he has absolutely no desire to go see it whatsoever. So we were talking and he said he wants to go see Return of Ant-Man or Ant- he loves all those Marvel movies. So he goes, well, maybe we can go see it at the same time. And he goes, and you can go see The Whale and I can go see Ant-Man. And I'm like, okay, so we might do that. So those are my Oscar movies that I have to go see. I don't even know. Let's see where the whale is playing around here. Okay. See, it's only playing in one theater. I don't even, I've never even heard of this theater. The, the living room theaters, I've never even heard of. I wish that they would, oh, wait a second. No, ma'am. Oh, you can buy it for $20 online. I'm gonna have to watch this movie tonight. I'm so excited. I don't care, listen, okay? That's cheaper than going to the movie theater any day. I'll go get me a fountain pop for 99 cents and maybe a box of some like, I don't know, some peanut butter M&Ms for another dollar fifty. <laughs> Set me free, baby, sitting right here, okay? And I'll be watching The Whale. You can watch it for $19.99 on Apple TV. You can rent it or on iTunes or wherever else. You can rent it on YouTube. Here, let's look on here and see. On YouTube, you can get it. Yeah, YouTube $19.99, Redbox $19.99, Voodoo for $19.99, Apple TV $19.99, Google Play $19.99. Oh my god, I'm so excited! <laughs> I'm gonna get to see all the Oscar movies! I'm gonna see all the Oscar movies! I can't believe it. Oh my god, that just made my day. Because I was trying to figure out, I was like thinking, okay. <laughs> now, I don't have any appointments this week. So, now, you know my big... <laughs> Shut up! Shut up, Goosey. Lucy Goosey. So, you know my big plan is that tomorrow, tomorrow I am like really, no, serious. <laughs> We're getting back to business tomorrow, okay? I didn't film no drama videos today. 
I've been sitting out here talking to my good Judy's on the phone, and I've been talking to all of you, and I've been having brunch with my husband, and I'm going to take a nap here in a little bit. And I have just enjoyed my weekend so much. I've had such a great weekend, and I'm going to watch my movies tonight. Oh, my God! I'm going to watch The Whale. I'm so excited. But, no, I'm, I've had... So, oh, my God! And The Last of Us comes out tonight. Oh, I watched Dear Edward last night, too. That was the other thing that I watched. Oh, that show gets me. I mean, that show is just like... Oh, my God. <laughs> I need to watch that show. What is wrong with me? Shows, books, and movies. Like, that is literally my life. Shows, books, and movies. And, um... But I love it. I love spending time with my husband and my friends and I'm watching movies and TV shows and reading books and it's, there was, oh God, I don't want to ruin this for you guys, but there was this, this moment and everything everywhere all at once. It was such a great moment and I, I can't ruin it for you. I can't say what this guy says, but basically and this won't ruin it the way that I'm going to say it but basically what he says is you know given everything that I know and every world that I could have lived in and what everything would have been like I still would have had that small little existence with you like that would have been the one that I would have picked and um I think sometimes that's what movies do for me or TV shows do for me or books, you know, like they, uh, I don't know. They remind me of life, of what life is about, you know. <laughs> Even like cartoons, like Charlie Brown, that's what life is all, that's what Christmas is all about, Charlie Brown, you know. I think like, and I'm not crying because I'm sad today. I'm crying because I just feel so blessed with my life. Like, I just feel so incredibly like, that I'm so excited to watch movies and take a nap with my husband and the dog, you know? And I was like, I could not fall asleep last night because I just had like movies, movies, movies laying around in my head and I kept on tossing and turning. And Boo Radley's like in between our pillows, like all tight, like with his head down. and. I was like talking to him real quiet and stuff and he was like <laughs> looking up at me and you know it's just like my friend Valerie said something to me and she said when we were together recently she said I hope that you do get another dog after Boo Radley passes away because I don't know what you'll do. Because, like, all the time with her, like, I don't just, like, I think people think probably, like, on video I just, like, talk, like, the way I do, but I don't. Like, in my real life, like, I say to people, like, well, Boo Radley was saying to me, or, like, Valerie and I were walking, and I said to her, I said, oh, hold on a second. I said, hello? I said, yes, Boo Radley, I'm coming home. I'll be home in just a, no, you hold on. And she was like, you're such an idiot. He doesn't talk, he's a dog. But, um, it really meant a lot to me when she said that, you know, because, like, it, it made me realize that she, like, really knows me, you know? But I think also, like, I have this fear of, you know, like, he's 13 and a half, you know, dogs don't live forever. And that's where I think I have to learn to, and I look back and I think, God, like, so much time has gone by since... I was in high school or, you know, I was talking to Mel about my old roommate today and God, when we were, it seems like just yesterday that she and I were living together. Sometimes, really, I, I don't know, that's not, not really it doesn't because me being like, the majority of our living together was when I was drinking. We lived together for a couple years after, but um, my drinking seems like a, a whole different world to me of when I was drinking and drugging. Like I remember it. I mean, I remember parts of it, but, like, I remember that life, but, like, it seems like a different world to me. It doesn't seem like the world, um, it doesn't seem like the world that I, like, have today, because I don't, you know? And, um, yeah, I don't know. I have to stay present is what I was going to say. You know, it's like, 
I can look back and say, God, it's been 30 years since I graduated from high school, 33 years or something, you know, since I graduated from high school, you know, and um, for a long time, you know, like I would get like real, like with my mom, my mom died at 64 and I think, God, if I live to be my mom's age, I've got 14 summers left, you know? You know, and I talk to people about wanting to get my health up because my husband's 12 years younger than me and I want to keep up with him and go to music festivals and travel and be able to do these things that he wants to do, you know, and be able to have a good life together and, you know, but and I figure I've got, you know, 10, 15 more good years left in me to be able to do that. Um, I also think the real trick to it is learning to stay present and really just enjoying the moment and the day that you're in. And for me, that is so important, you know? And I really struggle, like that's one of my biggest struggles is um, staying present because I'm a person and I don't know if it's my addiction, I don't know if it's how I was born or if it was my mom and it's definitely not my dad, but like I am somebody that puts one foot in tomorrow and one foot in yesterday a lot, you know? And, um, and it's, it's, you know, I'd rather just get excited about calling Tanya Jean and call it, uh, taking a nap with Alex and getting up and watching movies, you know? It's like, those are the things that, um, that I can control today and I can get excited about, you know? That being said, I am tomorrow, like we're back to business and I am going to, I got, I have like two drama videos that I wanna make. So I may make two drama videos tomorrow. It depends on what time I like get up and get started. Um, and then um, I'm thinking about doing Koei's unboxing on Wednesday because I want to make sure that that is not a video that I am rushing through. And so Monday I have couples counseling, Tuesday I have my meeting, and Wednesday I have nothing. So, do I have therapy on Wednesday? No, so I can just, that day is like, and Alex will be home late, so I can, I'll have the whole day, and then I will start with that video. Um, and then that will give me time to do it the way that I wanna do it. Um, Cause I'm really excited about doing that unboxing. I haven't even looked in the box because I want to be surprised when I look in it. Um, so anyway, I'm really excited about that. Um, so yeah, so, but tomorrow I'm coming back to doing drama videos and Peterism's videos and review videos and all that stuff. I've got it all planned out and, um, but I've really enjoyed this weekend. It's been really nice. It's been really nice, <laughs> nice. It's been a really nice, just kind of relaxing weekend. And um, I can't believe that I, oh my God, I, and I've almost vlogged for an hour. I like did two back, and I said I was gonna do shorter vlogs on the weekend, and I ended up doing two vlogs for, <laughs> yesterday was almost an hour, and today is almost an hour. So anyway, cheers to that. All right, you guys, let me know if you're watching the Oscar movies in the comment section below, if you've watched any of these movies that I talked about. And, um, yeah, and I'm gonna get off here now, and I'm gonna call Tanya Jean and start getting this vlog up, because this is a long vlog, so it'll take forever to upload. <laughs> and um, just so you know, it is currently 5.43, and I will go inside and I will start uploading this immediately, and so when you see it go up, is like how long it took me to get up. Eastern time, just to put that in perspective. So anyway, thank you for hanging out with me on the front porch. Um, as Diane always says, hanging out on the comfy, cozy front porch. I love you, Diane. And um, I hope that you guys are having a magically amazing Sunday. And I hope that you're getting relaxed, renewed, refreshed, and rejuvenated for the week ahead. And um, if nobody else has told you this today, I love you. Remember these three very important things. One, you can start your day over whenever you want. Two, practice random acts of kindness, but shh, don't tell anyone. And three, most importantly, make sure that you reach out to somebody and let them know how much they mean to you. You might be putting a smile on their face. You might just be changing their day for the positive, for the better. You might be making them feel a whole lot better about their lives, and you might make them feel not so all alone. And also remember to be kinder to one another, love one another a little bit more, and most importantly, be kinder and love yourselves a little bit more. And I love you guys so much, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye. Love ya.